is our uh, a little a little example of uh, where we've uh, uh, been focusing on soil health, water quality, um, ground cover, and animal health, and trying to get those things all playing um, out um, in balance together. This paddock's just a bit of an interesting case study, I suppose, of what we've been uh, trying to do here. Uh, there was a deepening erosion gully uh, starting through the middle of the valley here. And so the two things uh, we did uh, was we put some contours up around the hill behind us and a bit of a sort of leaky dam um, up the end so that uh, that's the sort of natural sequence farming principles of Peter Andrews. Um, so we, we did that first and we also, so that we wanted to slow the flow of the water coming down from that big catchment down there. We, don't, we didn't want to stop it, we needed to keep moving through the landscape. We just wanted to slow it down a little bit so it didn't cut these gullies out. Uh, so you can see here, down in front, you can see where the erosion was and we're getting good sort of ground cover on there. And as you come back along here, uh, you can see where we're still just bit by bit getting uh, a bit of ground cover on these uh, steeper bits. But having the cattle come through here, but with the long recoveries, you can get a bit of battering action where they decrease the angle of, uh, of the erosion. And so then you've got more chance for the, uh, for the grass to be growing up there and then to slow the water and then reduce, reduce the erosion on that area. So you can see that slowly happening. We increased the uh, recovery uh, period for this, this paddock. Uh, so we went um, out to sort of 150 days and beyond. And we also tried to uh, decrease the size of the paddock or the the, we tried to increase the utilisation of the, the paddock, meaning we had a smaller area to graze um, for a shorter period of time so that the cattle ate everything and also did all their, their dung and urine and then moved on. So it both got, uh, it, it meant that the cattle um, grazed quite um, in a very regular way. So we got good grass recovery across the whole area. And that then meant if you've got the really good ground cover, and that then slows the water down again and gets the water back down into the soil. So that's what we've been doing. We started that work in 2017 in this paddock, and it's now 2021. And uh, yes, we've had a particularly great uh, last uh, spring season and last, last year. So we've got extraordinary ground cover now, but bit by bit through those two principles, uh, we've started to really slow the flow of the water in this area. We're transitioning quite slowly from a, a, a weed base to more grasses. So we've had a bathus burp um, come through here we've, um, and we still get some of that. And uh, you can probably see a smattering of uh, purple with the Patterson's Curse. But uh, slowly the grasses are transitioning to um, uh, away from that more to a real diversity of, of grasses and forbs. So um, you've got a bit of wild oats over here. Probably within this area, um, we, we counted yesterday, probably five or six different species. You know, not all of them are high production grasses, or, but uh, the fact that you've got that diversity uh, means that you're going to get a lot, uh, a lot better soil health or you'll, you'll at least get a lot of action, soil biology action with different uh, root types. And also you, um, from an animal health perspective, the um, cattle are getting a, the chance to um, eat a whole variety of grasses. So they're more likely to get all their sort of minerals and nutrients um, met. So this is an area near one of our monitoring sites that we do every year with an organisation called Land to Market. It's a farmer co-op uh, that does 
soil, monitoring biodiversity, monitoring water quality, monitoring uses a very scientifically rigorous uh, approach to monitoring your ecological health. Uh, so it's called an ecological outcome verification when you, uh, when you finally start trending in a positive uh, direction. Uh, and the reason why we're involved in that monitoring is so that we can really track uh, how our management is leading us uh, in a positive direction, uh, not just for the production outcomes of our farm, because it definitely helps with that, but also for the impact that we're having in the whole climate problem that we're all living through. So we're really, uh, from a climate perspective, working here on our local water cycle, trying to keep the water in the soil, trying to encourage plant growth, that, that photosynthesize and in doing so they cool this this little area and then that little area and then our whole farm and hopefully that's our uh, contribution not only sequestering carbon in the soil but just reducing the temperature of things by always having a living root uh, in the soil.